Great. So hi, everyone. Thanks for joining in. And thank you for participating in Intuition V8.0. We're really excited to have you and excited to see the hacks you build over the next weekend. And as you know, the event's happening on 26th and 27th of January. And this year, we have quite a few uh, sponsors, such as our platinum sponsors, Goldman Sachs, MSD, and Indeed, who are offering up some really interesting tracks. And uh, we have our gold sponsors, Google and GovTech, our silver sponsor, IEEE, and our bronze sponsors, Kimaj and version 2. And we'd like to thank all of them for making this event possible. And we're really excited to be uh, seeing what you all build over the next weekend in this event. And this is Road to Intuition, which is basically a workshop series that we came up with to help everyone understand some essential hacking skills that can prove to be really useful during the hackathon period. So we're covering topics such as Git yesterday, which uh, I believe someone has pasted the link to in the chat. So if you want to see that workshop, go ahead and see the YouTube video. And today's workshop is Introduction to Flutter. And we're having other Road to Intuition workshops as well on things like cloud and blockchain further in the week. So do stay tuned for that. And I'd like to thank Open Source Society for uh, collaborating with us on giving these workshops. Open Source Society is basically another club in NTU, which is responsible for promoting the open source culture in NTU. And they have a lot of things such as TGIF hacks, where they host workshops on technical content and hack OSS, where they're involved in making a lot of technical projects. And they're, uh, they're giving all uh, three of the workshops in Road to Intuition. And today's workshop will be given by Ankita, who's the technical director at OSS. And she's currently a year three computer science student at NTU. And she's also interning as a Android mobile dev intern at Shopee. So you're in good hands to learn Flutter from somebody. So that's about it for uh, about OSS and Ankita. And in general, do keep these rules in mind because they're important for uh, intuition and for getting swag in general. So do remember to Uh, yeah, let's just uh, wait a moment. I think our internet's a little choppy right now. Yeah, I think her device got shut down. Yeah. Um, okay, fine. So I'll just uh, take on from here. So as she was continuing about the rules, so these are a few uh, general rules that we need to follow. First of all, uh, fill up the attendance form, which will be shared a little later throughout the session. Uh, and if the teammates, if your teammates didn't fill up the registration form, then please make sure that uh, you should. And each member of the team must fill the registration form. Uh, attending all the workshop is one of the cri criteria for swag. That is the um, the gift boxes that's going to be handed. And those who attend the work workshops will be eligible for an exclusive swag. The other swag criteria will be revealed on the hack day. So I think, uh, uh, thank you, Aratrika, for the good intro. So let's go on with uh, Flutter. So can I uh, know if everyone has installed Flutter already? So if I'm not wrong, earlier we have sent a mail with uh, two different playlists for Windows as well as Mac to install the Flutter um, Android Studio as well as the emulator. Can I confirm with everyone that we have um, we have uh, uh, installed the Flutter application. Maybe everyone can give a thumbs up or a react because, because of time constraint, we'll be directly going into the coding and not spending as much time in the installation. So is everything fi everyone fine with the installation so we can jump and go ahead right into Flutter. So I'll just wait for a while for a few more people to react. And yeah, I would like this to be a very interactive and chill session. So everyone can just uh, react and, you know, I'll maybe ask questions in between and please feel free to tell me if I'm going really fast or if you have any doubts, please put it in the chat or just unmute your mic, that would do. Okay, so I'm assuming that everyone has installed. 
um, installed Flutter, followed through the Windows application, everything. And let's dive right in to the introduction of Flutter. So today we'll be discussing the table of contents include what is Flutter and why Flutter. I'll show you a bit about the development environment, the layouts and structures, as well as widgets. So before uh, I go in, can I know who all have experience with development in the sense, application development in the sense of Android or iOS? Maybe a few of you can put a thumbs up or react a thumbs up, like who all have uh, good experience or just, you know, coded a few applications in Android or iOS. Okay. Okay. One, one thumbs down and two thumbs up, three, four thumbs up. Okay. There's a, there's a scary emoji. No, it's not overwhelming. Don't worry. I will go through with the correct introduction. Okay, fine. So um, a few of you have gone through or worked with Android or iOS app development. So suppose I am a software developer and I created this nice wonderful application. Let it be another grab application, a food delivery application. And me as a developer, I have learned only Android. So Android includes um, Java and XML. And I built this application using Android Studio. Uh, and that is available only for Android operating system. The app becomes a big hit. Everyone loves my app. But then a lot of people who has iPhone, that is the Apple iOS uh, operating system, they want to have the app as well. They want to install the app as well. But I have only made it for uh, the Android um, application, the Google Play Store, but not for App Store. So if I want to ever create another app for the iOS uh, uh, operating system, I need to learn from ground up. I need to build my app from ground up. So if I'm an Android developer, I need to learn all the iOS software, the Swift and everything to create the same exact application from ground up. So suppose I, so that would mean that I have two different code bases, one for Android and one for iOS. And suppose I want to add a new feature to the app. So if I wanted to add a new feature, I need to add separately into the Android um, code base and separately into the iOS code base as well. And maintaining the application is going to be a big deal. So if I find a bug in one uh, Android code base, I need to fix it there as well as the other code base, the iOS code base. So this is where Flutter comes to the rescue. So Flutter is basically just a single code base. So Flutter, it is developed by Google, is a toolkit that helps developers design UI with pre-built widgets. So these all are widgets, I'll come to that later on, to make developing easy for any device, Android or iOS, or even a web file and customizable widgets that can be deployed almost anywhere. So basically, Instead of creating two different apps with two different code bases, I can just use Flutter and that's just a single code base and which can be deployed for Android as well as the iOS operating system. So it's a single code base used to maintain instead of having separate Android, iOS as well as web. And it is powered by Dart. Dart is a programming language that is used uh, for Flutter which is extremely easy to work with. Another few uh, advantages include the split second hot reload. So a few of the application, when you're trying to run on the emulator, it takes around five, 10 minutes. But in case of Flutter, within like a command, so you press command S, it reloads really uh, fast. It's a fast update of the UI. And another thing is the Flutter has open source code. So if you want to see how a particular widget, so if I want to see how this text widget or a button or a button widget is coded, you can check out the original code by the Flutter developers. For example, um, for iOS development, you can't really see. iOS has a really secret implementation of these buttons. So in that way, Flutter is really great. Now, um, I hope all of you have understood why we use Flutter and what is Flutter. So let us go on into coding. Let's go directly into coding. So I hope everyone can follow through this. Please do let me know if I'm going too fast or if I'm going too slow. Just, just put it in the chat. Just give a reaction. I'm here. 
So first, how we go about is, I hope your Android Studio is set up. You have this small thing called create new Flutter project as well as your emulator is on. So first off, if you are planning to go ahead, do you do we need to use Flutter for the hackathon? So if I'm not wrong, um, you can use any application, any any kind of software to create for the hackathon to submit for your hackathon. This this workshop is just an introduction to see you know for you guys to learn more about Flutter. Um, okay, yeah. Welcome. Okay, so now let's create our new Flutter project. So, so over here you click on create new Flutter project and you click on the Flutter application over here. I hope everyone can see my uh, everyone can see my uh, screen. Yes, you can. Uh, you can use Flutter in VS Code as well. Yes, one thing is. Uh, so the IDE that you can use to write Flutter is VS Code as well as Android Studio. I would really prefer to use Android Studio over VS Code because uh, you can connect to the emulator quite easy and they have a lot of other tips and tricks that you can follow through. So I would say Android Studio is much more um, free and you know it has a lot of benefits compared to VS Code. VS Code, you need to add in plugins and stuff like that. So I will create my new Flutter project. So over here you have the project name and this is where it is stored in and the project location. And if you want to add later on, you can add a description. So let me say NTU OSS Flutter app, okay. This is the package name. This is for a company. So it goes by your company name and then the package name. So yeah, so we just finished that. And this will now load our initial app. So all this, if you see, is uh, the default application that comes up. So suppose, let me just try running it. So how you connect through the emulator is by clicking on this icon over here. You see the small icon with the Android button and you can just run. Make sure this emulator is already running. Okay, fine, it's already running. So let me just try running this application. So why we really need an emulator is, if you've worked with web development before, obviously we need somewhere. So emulator is like this place, or you know, it's just a, a virtual device on our uh, laptop. So we can re review the code over here. So if you, in case, usually emulators are really slow. So what you can do is you can directly connect your laptop to your Android phone or iOS phone. And if you put in the developer options, you can get to see whatever app and it will directly install into your device. So um, this will take some time because it's just installing the new application. So while uh, that's happening, I will explain this IDE. So if you have to see, it looks really complex. It's very overwhelming. I get it, but slowly, slowly we'll get through this. So over here, the main uh, file that we use to run all our code is over here. So if you go to the Flutter application, you go to live, you see main dot. So this is the path. Okay. This is the path. So this is the navigation bar and this is the project pane. So if you see over here, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, Flutter is only a single code base, right? And if you see this Android and iOS, Flutter basically is the toolkit that converts whatever code is over here into Android and iOS. So yes, we have our emulator running. Okay, meanwhile, this is the project pane. And um, another important file other than main dot is pubspec.yaml. So over here, it has all the external files that you need to. So there will be so many libraries. So if for APIs or any other external libraries, this is where, this is an important file that you use to uh, implement and install these. So even if you have stuff like fonts, and as a matter of fact, even if you want to locally download or locally within your project itself, put some images, then we have this asset over here, okay? So yeah, so if you see, this is the app. So how it runs is you see this my app. So 
basically how Flutter runs is it looks for main dot dot. So over here, since we're running main dot dot, it looks for the main function. Within main function, it looks for run app, and we have my app here. So I just this is the demo default application that uh, Flutter uses for us. So this is just a simple application just to see. So yeah, this is a bit complex, and given the time frame, uh, I'll just be going through everything as uh, simply. Okay, so. Another cool thing about this IDE is, you know, you can get to collapse this code over here. So, you know, it's more readable uh, yeah, because someone asked VS Code. So I would definitely recommend Android Studio because it has a lot of stuff like this. And since I'm running, you can see the tree-like function, the tree-like uh, widgets of, uh, of Flutter, as well as Flutter outline. And there's a lot of good features. We'll go into that later. So another thing is dart analysis, if you have any errors, but as of now we don't. And yeah, so right now let's, uh, I hope everyone got this. Maybe can you give a reaction, thumbs up or anything if I'm going too fast, like maybe, or can I, can I get, if everyone is catching up? Yeah, okay, that's four people, five people out of 100. All good. Okay, that's cool. That's nice to hear. Okay. It's okay. Don't be scared. We got this. Okay. So, what we can do right now is let's create our first app. Okay. It's simple. If you're going, if you're doing Flutter, honestly, you don't really need any experience when it comes to, I mean, maybe if you're creating a very complex app which we are not going to do today. We're going to do something very simple, something very that's just a static user interface. And yeah, don't worry, we've got it all in hand. So first of all, um, what we can do is we can just cancel all this, okay? And just going through the basics today. So basically what, um, what Flutter does is it looks for the main function and which app to run. So over here, we create a material app, okay? So what is a material app? Material app is something that conforms to material design, which is then again developed by Google. So material app basically takes up this whole space and the entirety of Flutter is just widgets. So if anyone has worked, I haven't worked personally worked with iOS before, so I'm not quite sure about that, but in terms of Android, you have Java and XML files and XML files are mainly the UI pages and you have to, and the Java files are the backend and you have to connect all that. And it's a, it's a big deal, but when it comes to Flutter, you can code so easily the user interface. And so let's start with material app. So you always start with a material app and material app has these themes which make it much easier to code. So how um, Flutter works is, as I said, again, widgets and widgets fulfill every role. So if you've seen earlier, I've showed here, you have a container widget, a row widget, a column, a text, images, all of these are widgets that we go ahead with, okay? So let me start with, Suppose in this material app, I need one second. So if you hover over this, you can see what all is required over here, right? So I create, um, a title called text, which uses a text widget. Of hello world. Okay, wait one second. There seems to be an error. Get that done. Okay, let's just, it's home. So if I wait for a while, so usually emulators take quite a while. So if you have connected to your laptop, I mean, to your phone, it's great, but yeah. So right now we have this, it's being presented, hello world is being said, but we haven't added any themes or any of the sort. So this is how it usually works. So in so within the material app, we add this home, under this home, we add this widget called text. So if you have to go to Flutter Inspector, it shows the entire tree of all the widgets that are included. So next, um, so instead of a text, 
let me add a scaffold image, a scaffold widget. Okay, so what is a scaffold widget? So since I've explained earlier, Flutter is all about widgets. This is the documentation of Flutter. Let me give, uh, give me a second. I'll put this in the chat box for everyone to see. So if you have any doubts, because there are hundreds of widgets within Flutter. So if you have any doubts regarding any widget that you want to use, so it could be an image, it could be a text, it could be a card, the hundreds of widgets that are there. If you have a doubt, you can use this documentation to help clear everything else. So let's just search what scaffold is, okay? So if you see scaffold, it implements the basic material design and it has this app bar that we can use and the body as well as additional things that you can add like a floating button. So one thing is always use these documentation. So first we're gonna create a scaffold, okay? And within the scaffold, we can have an app bar. So app bar is quite common. And another cool thing that you can do within this IDE is if you just hover around, you can see all the different properties that's required. So over here, you can add an app bar, you can add a body, you can add a floating action button as seen earlier, you see this? Yeah, that's a floating action button and a bunch of other stuff. So let's start out with an app bar, okay? So you can go check out app bar. And then again, within the app bar, let's see its properties. So you have a leading and you have a title. So I want a title and a title should be of text. Hello world. One second. Yeah, this has some. So you can remove that const and you will get a scaffold that is in a second yes see hello world okay so this is one widget and if you have to see the flutter inspector so you can see that this tree like so you have a material app in a scaffold in an app bar and there's a text so one second so we went to the dev so if you see that the blue color is our actual screen how it works is the entirety of the blue is material app Within the material app, we have a text. So suppose, um, and a scaffold. Okay, so suppose I want to include this. So this is the body, if you see, and this is the app bar, okay? And let's go ahead and add the body. So what is a body? I just want to do a text, I guess. That's enough for me, okay? And I add, hi. This is my new application. Okay, and when I run it, this gets to be seen. Okay, so this is how it works. So that's that's scaffold class on its own. So suppose I want to make this text in the center. Um, a cool trick I'm going to teach is you see this light bulb, it has to be wrapped in the center. So, so, so basically how this works is you can't really center everything that easily. Like you, you can add padding margin if you've worked with web application before, but it's not really the case. So if I center it, suppose I want it to be seen in the center, I'll just run that and let's, let's wait for a while and see. Okay, so this is centered right now. So I think I've gone through the basics of uh, a material app, how to center a text, and yeah, so this is how it looks. So you have a material app. We have added a scaffold inside. Within the scaffold, we have added in the body the text, and within the text, we have added it's centered. So if you see the tree like structure over here, it goes in this way. Okay. So this is the scaffold widget as mentioned earlier. So you have the, you can add a side navigation, you can add a right navigation. Side navigation is, if you know most, more like old Android apps, they have these buttons you can press and then, you know, the side navigation comes. So you can have a bo bottom bar and all those amazing things, amazing things in a widget. And you can see all the properties over here later on in the documentation. So that's, that's all that we use the scaffold widget for. So, 
I'll just share the basics and we can go check out more widgets later on. So let's create our application. So what is this application that we're going to create? It's going to be something really simple. And I, it's a business card UI. So there's basically no use of carrying a business card because let's all be environment friendly and um, yeah, let's not waste paper. So let's create this app for ourselves to share our business card. So if you see, you have this uh, background, you have one asset here, one widget here, another widget and all this. So let's create this. Okay, it's gonna be a cool project, a cool static UI to start off with. So we have started off with the scaffold and app bar. So can I get in the chat, is an app bar necessary? I don't know, up to you guys. What do you guys say? Should I remove the app bar or should I keep it? Keep it, remove. Keep, oh my God, this is very mixed opinions. Make more app bar. No, you can't have two app bars. For a business card, remove, yes. Okay, no, this is really mixed. Remove. Okay, I think I have more people for remove than mixed. I mean, then uh, keep it because then again, if you see the UI of more newer applications, people don't have app bars. So let us remove this. Okay, that's simple. Let's just remove this. Now, um, if you have to see, I'll just remove this body as well. And we'll come back to that later, okay? So if you have to see the layout, I'll just explain the layout of our application, uh, of Flutter in general. So if you have worked with Android before, you know there's a bunch of layouts, like uh, constraint, relative, linear, grid, which is also confusing, but in Flutter, it's simple and direct. You can either have a row or you can have a column. Of course, you can have a row in columns. You can have columns of rows, but this is how it works. So suppose this is our main app. A main app has a row with three columns and you can have each. This is the tree structure of how an application would look like. Okay. So, so if you see this, you have a row and you have this, you have rows and you have columns. So basically how you can implement layout structures in uh, Flutter is using rows and columns. So what do you guys, okay, so let me just um, give you an example of a column and a row. So this is how you implement it. You have children, okay? So I have, I can implement text. So I have my application, okay? And I'll just copy paste this. Okay, so this is of column, uh layout okay let's see how a column layout will look like okay so i have column with three children okay text number one application one two and three so sorry it's taking a while okay another thing um i should have mentioned this earlier is if you see this thing is annoying right so basically this is the status bar and you don't really want to see your stuff beyond the status bar and the same issue comes with um iOS as well. You have the small camera thing over there and it comes beyond that. It's kind of annoying. So how you can combat that is adding something called safe area. So in a safe area, what I can do is you see this light bulb, that light bulb is literally the most helpful thing that you can ever have. So you click on that, you can wrap with a widget, you can wrap with center, a column, a padding, row, anything. It makes life easier instead of, you know, having to, you know, uh, add one line here and then going back, checking which comma, which all that to do, it's really annoying. So let's just wrap with the widget. See, it instantly does that. And you can go safe area, just enter twice. And yeah, it should be coming be beyond that. Let's hope it comes beyond that. No, it will come beyond that. Yeah, so if you see this, it has ignored the status bar and come beyond that. So this is a column application. So you have one, two, three, okay? So everything is seen in terms of column, okay? So these children are in the term in a column way. So let me just do one, two, and three. Now let me just change this into row, okay? Let's see how row will look like. Trust me, 
this is actually faster but it takes a while in this thing so if you see in this row kind of implementation you have row 1 2 and 3 so all the children are in the form of a row so row this is how it looks like so as you've seen earlier column this is how it looks like also guys uh, just check out the chat do make sure to fill up the attendance form okay so now let's go uh, so i have this question for you all what do you think this kind of layout is it is is it a column or a row please put it down in the chat is it a column or is it a row yeah is it is this uh, which part do you want me to repeat as in like is it a column or is it a row okay the question so um is the layout as i've mentioned earlier you have row and you have column what do you think the the ui of this should be a column or a row okay a lot of people have said a column a column that's cool so yes we use a column that's good so then again i hope everyone understood the concept of a row column and children can i have a thumbs up reaction if everyone understood a row column and children okay i have three people okay okay that's cool okay that's cool so i will continue with the rest so now we have all this so it's a it's a column so if you have to really see this is the first widget the second widget the third widget the fourth widget and the fifth widget so all these are different types of widgets which we will go into later so one the, uh, let me ask okay let me just make this into column okay so let me just ask everyone what kind of widget do you think this is what kind of widget do you think this is a picture okay an image an icon not really an icon because icons are you know like this this is an icon but this is a dude so an ad okay no not really an ad a picture yeah so over here we call it an image so let's add an image widget most of you got it right so let's add an image so for images you they usually directly just add everything which is really good also one more thing that you should do is you see um in terms of android studio they make everything so readable so you can see where which um you know bracket is for a column which bracket is for a scaffold all that so if you add a comma and let's just comment this out okay so now and you save this it shows you which um, you know closing bracket it is so you don't have curly braces in this you have um, the spaces and you don't usually use semicolon so for the ui portion we just use a comma and it would reformats the code which makes it much easier to read so let's go back to image so an image should be of type so let me use this um, documentation so suppose i have a doubt oh no which image should i use now so let me go to the image class no not this um yeah so over here they have the documentation have really cool videos and stuff so over here let me use this network image so over here in the documentation they say i can use an icon an image and that image could be of a file it could be of an asset it could be from the network so right now let's use an image from the network so if you see here this is the way let's use this okay so you can go for image network image and add in the, any url okay so i've got this url uh let me just give me a second okay. okay let i'll just explain this anyways so over here this is my network image and i just want to add that so if you see in my column let's just wait for a while and also the loading depends on your cpu memory and how fast everything is and yes so we have an owl ready here so this is our first image in a column row okay 
so now uh, we need to make it into a circular way right so then again you don't need any external library to download that flutter has everything okay so let's create this or just do this circle avatar okay make sure to remove the red squiggly lines and also this so if you have any doubts could be the warning sign you can just add a constant oh it's all fine so circle avatar let's see what we need so i'm suppose I, it's the first time i'm using circle avatar and i have literally no idea what's going on i can just hover over here and see oh the, you need a child you can use a background color you can use a radius a foreground color that's cool so i can go around type a child what should my child be i think it should be a network image right so let's uh, cut that paste it here remove this hopefully right, give me a second uh, network image yeah Wait, um, yeah okay they don't want a network image so i think they want an image image of yeah image of um, whatever it was network image here okay i'll just remove that there is a lot of commas here I think we really require all that. Okay. So once I click save, so command S, it directly shows me this, but um, let me just reload this. Hot restart this and let's wait for a while. Oh, you see this small, oh, that's not supposed to happen. Give me a second. Uh, let me just uh, try this. So let's try the radius of around 100, okay? Okay, that works now. Okay, there is some problem here. I think it should be, you see here, I think it should just be this. Let me try that out. Okay, let's have this. Let's just uh, go back to the normal. Or maybe I think, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. I'll just remove this and see how it works. Okay, there's an issue with that. Um, I checked earlier, but there seems to be no issue, so I'm not quite sure about that. Anyways, let's uh, continue. So suppose we have this image. Um, we can check that out later. So suppose we have this image, but we don't want an image of an owl, do we? We don't. So let me just cop copy paste this image. I'll share the image address in the chat over here. You can just use this. So I'm using this URL for those who are following up. Yeah, I'll just use that in my URL and go ahead and do this. Okay, fine. Okay, fine, that's fine. We will go back to the owl. Now, uh, let me just uh, discuss another thing. So suppose we have this body, right? We have this body and we need to add a color to it. So I don't like this white color, it's really basic. So let's go and check out this orange. So out of these values, can anyone put it in the group? Um, which value is it for a color? So this is open. So I'd like someone to put it in the chat, which value it is for a color. So I wanna change the background color of this body. Which value will I use? Background color, okay. Okay, okay, cool, cool. You guys are, yes, that's right. So I'll be using a background color. So. One thing about color is you can use colors dot 
you can use whatever color you want. So suppose I'm looking for amber. Okay, so the thing about um, Flutter is you have a bunch of these values to choose from. So you don't necessarily need to use hex values. You can use hex values. There is a function for that, but this is one of the easiest ways. So I have amber, but I want this particular shade of amber. So I can just follow through and I will find a bunch of shades that I can use. And this is one of the amazing features. So I want 900 and let's go crazy. And I'll put 900, okay? And run that, you will see that my entire app turns orange. Okay, that's cool. Now, now, now. Um, what do you think should I put next? You all tell me, what should I put next now? Is it a text widget? Should I put a card widget? Let me have more uh, interaction going. Okay, a text, I got a text. Come on, where's everyone at? A link, okay, not a link, but this is, okay, a link is really useful. You can add that as a button, and but that's a lot of um, logic, a lot of backend that's left, and I don't think we have enough time for that, but let's go ahead and put a text. So I have a text of Ankita. Okay, this is my name. Ankita Anil, I am a software developer. And yeah, so when I run this, I can see the information here. I think this amber is a bit much. So let me just change it to, uh, let me see a slight shade. So 50 looks good. It's a bit slow. Okay, so I have my network image and uh, the text over here, I have Ankita Anil, software developer. So now um, let me just style this. It doesn't look very basic. I wanna style this. So I will use over here, style, text style, okay? So for that, I'll just use over here, style. Let me see the type. So suppose you have style, but you don't know what kind of widget it is. See, you can't just simply add in values like that. You have to always check whether it's a widget. So text style is of a widget type, text style. So I'll just add text style. And over here, I have the different, let me just add this const modifier. Uh, I can have color, I can have font size, font weight, font style, a lot of functions, a lot of different properties that I can use. So suppose I want font weight, I want to make it bold, yeah. So I go font weight bold. Uh, color, it's fine, it's fine. So how about I want size? So I can just go font size and make it around twenty. Okay, so if I run this, I will get. So you see this right now is barely readable. How can I change this? Just add a comma everywhere at the end, and yeah, you see this here. I think I'll just um, make this image. Second, let me just try the background. Radius, let me just make it, I don't know, um, around 100, okay. So if you see, I have this done, Ankita Anil, and software developer, so let me just copy paste the same style. So as, then again, as I've mentioned, over here you add in the comma, it's, um, it becomes extremely readable and really easy. So I put this here, and yeah, don't forget the commas. Commas are basically the semicolons of uh, Flutter, of dot, dot, yeah. So I have the software developer. It's all looking good, but uh, there's one thing that's a bit bothering me a bit. Do you see? Okay, what is that one thing that's bothering me? Can any of you um, put that in the group, put that in the chat? Like there is something that's not right. The UI, yeah, maybe you go in depth. Is it the layout? Is it? Not in the middle. Okay, you need to send up, send up my children. Yes, I need to send up my children. Okay, let me just change this bold. So yes, I need to send up my children. So how can I do that? Can can someone tell me how I can just send up my children? Where should I do it? Should I do it in the scaffold or the column? Someone, someone put it in the chat. 
scaffold or column okay that's right so we just put it in the column so easy easy light bulb press wrap with center you got it there so let's just um okay let's take a run so if you see this you can see the entire hierarchy of your widgets okay it's taking time just run so you can see the entire hierarchy so you have material app a safe area safe area so it doesn't go above this you know status bar then a scaffold a center a column and these are the children of the column you see so we have one text another text a circle avatar with an image in it so this is great and let me do one thing um i another thing is bothering me at this point yeah i haven't finished this two widgets i'll go into that a bit later but like there's one more thing that's bothering me what do you guys think it is the ui yes but maybe a bit more specifically text spacing image sharpness yeah the picture is in a circle yeah i know that's bothering me too but um, i'm not quite sure i tried earlier but it wasn't working but yeah the padding around the image not in the middle okay fine so this is in the center but if you have to really see the column is in the center yeah the column this particular widget is in the center so how do we work upon the spacing between these two so another cool thing about um flutter is in within the layout they have main axis and cross axis so since we're using the column this is the cross axis and this is the main axis and you have functions like center start end space evenly space around and space between so if you see this is our column widget and this different colors are our different children so if we add if we add uh, this particular property called main axis then we can you know space around these widgets widgets yeah so suppose i can go into column column has then again many properties so let's see what all properties so you have this main axis alignment okay and the default one is start okay so i have main axis okay so do you think i should use main axis alignment or should i use cross axis alignment so if you see um so flexbox style so in flutter there's no uh, it's not the layout is mainly in the sense of column and row not really flex so flex is very html react type uh, property but over here in flutter mainly we use rows and columns so can any of you tell me what which value should i use should i use because i want to create this and like mainly put this in the center right if you see over here i want to put it in the center so should i use main axis or cross axis based on this image that you guys see over here uh what do you guys think i should use main axis or cross axis okay i have one person with main one person with cross okay more people coming with main that's cool it's okay guys it's all online you can put in your text i just wait for a few more answers main axis or cross okay okay we have a lot of main so let's see if it's main axis or not so yeah or well, a great thing you don't even need to type up the entire thing it'll just come and you enter it and let's see what kind of widget it should use it requires a main axis alignment okay so i put main axis alignment dot center okay let's just see how it's going to be in the center okay let's wait let's wait oh this works well okay that's cool now so this is exactly what we wanted now uh this is not quite what we wanted is it so let's try a different value okay let's let's try a cross one would be good um it's not would be good so cross axis is only applicable for for this area not for main axis so main axis for row runs along this way while a cross axis for for a row runs along this way um i'll yeah i hope that makes sense anyway suppose i'm just playing around with different values i want a space between okay space between would be this value here so suppose this is the entire column this will be how it's going to be placed so let's just see that 
Okay. So you see the difference, the space between, it has a space. So if you see this picture, one second, if you see this picture over here, it has this type. So that's, that's a cool feature. It's very easy to work with. Now, uh, I don't know, space between, not really. So can you guys give me the ideal? So suppose I'm going to soon add these two tiles. Can you guys give me the ideal kind of, um, you know, value for this? So should I put center? Should I put evenly? I don't know. Can you guys give me like an input on it? Come on, someone. Space evenly. End. End is towards the end. So, okay. 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 Maybe one more person. A few more evenly okay that's cool so everyone is going for evenly let's see how evenly goes like okay space evenly yeah that's cool oh okay that's cool so if the more and more widgets that you add right now it looks eh, fine but the more and more widgets that you add it somehow spaces in between so another thing that i wanted to mention is if you work with android or other software you see values like 18 bp 18 sp and stuff but in terms of flutter you just put in the numeric value and that numeric value will be in terms of your device size okay so now uh what what widget do you guys think i should add next if you guys are comfortable with unmuting yourself go ahead and do that as well a button okay so um my bad this is really not a button if you're adding a button then um i think i will really need more time okay label makes sense um so let me see so how i can use the help of this is it's more of like a list tile okay so then again many many wonderful widgets so over here we use a widget called list tile and if you have to see there are so many types there are so many properties that you can add so let's go ahead and see the ui okay so i have one icon here and i have a text here so i'll be using this list style okay one line with a leading widget so what's the code for that okay if i have to see the code here i can just copy and paste and um, it'll be one line with a leading widget so I can just use list style copy paste. So wait, let me see. Um, this is the text. I'll just add a new list style. Okay, that's cool. Now what is it that I need? A child. Okay, what's a child? No, not a child, sorry. A leading and a title. So the title, so a leading is what? A leading is an icon. So if you see the icon, it could be a widget of icon so i add that and one amazing thing about flutter which is extremely easy okay so if you work with react or anything before you know that if you need to use a simple icon a simple icon like this you need to download external libraries it's a big deal but in flutter everything is just there so since we use material app we can choose from a range of icons like this and it's extremely easy so I am creating a new widget called icon, and that is icons dot. It's not AC unit, but let me say call. Yeah. Okay. So I have icon dot call here. If I want to add a color, I can add a color. Oh, it's really easy. So leading is done. Let me add my uh, commas to make it much more easy to read. And now I need a title. So a title is of type text sorry it's a type text widget and my text will be i don't know plus six five i'm not putting my real number yeah and um yeah so i have one list style now i'll just copy paste make it the second one so you see this email thing now i'll just edit this Okay, and I'll use whatever I can that is. So ooh, there are so many options. See, you see this? It's much, much easier. So I use email and yeah. Let 
let's wait for a while wait for it to load and yeah over here so basically one thing is you know over here if you see this particular list class we want it in this way now so if you see they have wrapped it in a card widget so if we wrap it in a card widget which is easy this light bulb you can wrap it with a widget over here card and then again this one again wrap it with a widget card it saves you so much of time see and there you go give me a second there you go you have created this that's cool there's a lot of layout things that we can do and we can do that uh, in a while so suppose i want to add a horizontal line i can add something called a divider okay make sure to remove all red squiggly lines with a height yeah it's a height of two so a divider can have high thickness sorry so i want a thickness as divider is just a single vertical line that i can add after the software developer so it looks cool okay so this is all now um space evenly right so space evenly, let me just make it all center, okay? And we can work on with that later on, right? Okay, let me just make it all centered as of now. And let's use parameters like padding and margin to make this look more, um, more better instead of just space evenly. So if you guys know, if you guys have worked with app development before, you know padding, uh, margin, border, and padding. So you have the content, the whatever is within the content is padding, and whatever outside is the margin. So if you have to see, I want to, should I, uh, so I want some space between my name, so my name and um, the rest of the uh, other stuff that's going on. Should I add a padding or should I add a margin? Margin. Okay. I have one person saying margin. Can I have more people? Can I have more people? Margin. Okay, fine. I think you're correct. Let me see. Um, one second. Oh, you can add a margin. So uh, we are. Uh, so you can add a padding. Okay, you add a padding of 15. So for more, um, yeah, so you ha had a padding, okay? So now I want to add, um, so this card, so the thing about um, I've realized about Flutter is a few widgets they have its own um, its own property called padding and a few don't. So in terms of text, you need to pad around, and that pad around is basically margin. And for a few things like card, there is padding within. Okay. Okay. That is So let me add, okay, so if I want to show a uh, stuff like container has padding, wait one second, give me a second. So I will wrap this with padding and let's see for a uh, for different term. Um, different values. So if you see this, it all automatically updates all this value. So what is this edge insets? So edge insets can have different values. So if you just say dot, it can be zero, it can be symmetric, all and only. So symmetric means you need to, uh, symmetric in the sense of vertical and horizontal, uh, so, and all in, in terms of, you know, all will be eight. And only is, suppose you want a padding only from the left, only from the right in that way. So let's do symmetric. Symmetric, I'll specify which one. So vertical could be, I don't know, eight. And horizontal could be uh, 15, maybe. Let's see how that goes. 
and this is for this particular tile okay okay so that works see so i have a vertical of um, eight and a horizontal of 15 and let me just add this padding to this as well okay i can copy paste this line of code and yeah just around this and we have this ready so the same thing i can add to other edges and yeah I have this ready. Okay. So one thing is you see this image that isn't circle, right? So I have a doubt with that. Let's see. Let's properly check it out, okay? Circle avatar. Avatar class from material, okay? So let's fix that up. So over here, I thought you can use a child with an image, but no, that's not how it works. You use a background image of type network image, okay? So let's go ahead and change that. So you have over here background image, okay? Of type network image. So I'll just copy, cut this, paste this. And yeah, you have the radius and the other stuff, okay? So let's see. Let's see if that works. It should be working. So here you are. Oh, you finally have, this is not me, but um, yeah, you finally have the circle avatar. So if you have any doubts regarding the widgets, you can always go ahead and check this documentation. They have a bunch of information. So. If you have to see, yeah, it's all we have clear, almost developed this, and yeah, I think that's with a lot of other additional changes we can, you know, create more applications, more more UI features. So maybe another feature you could look upon is as many of you people have um, of the audience has recognized this as a button. Maybe you could change that into a button and add a functionality. So suppose I want to make that into a button. Let me search for one second. So go under button and see a button bar or just a button under button bar material class. So I'll find a bunch of, you know, widgets like this, which can help you later on. So those are things that you can add and stuff like that. So um, one second. So I really hope that you guys understood a thing or two from Flutter. This is just the basics. And yeah, thank you so much for attending this workshop and hope you guys have a good night and a good day ahead.